the most important exercise for a hockey player. You could argue it's a squat variation, could be a deadlift, maybe even an Olympic lift. That's because the legs are money. The more strength and power you have in your legs, the better you will perform on the ice. But what about the upper body? While most male athletes would rate the barbell bench press as the number one movement, I don't think so. To me, the chin-up is the ultimate upper body exercise. When you get really good at them, you'll have a nice wide back, a decent pair of guns, and most importantly, a lean, strong, athletic body. That's because you can't be a strong chin-upper while also being fat. The more body fat you carry, the harder the exercise will be. The more fat you shed, the easier it becomes. So it perfectly correlates with your level of leanness. On the bench press, you could be the fattest guy in the gym and still outlift everyone else. That's because more body mass, regardless of whether it's muscle or fat, helps you bench heavier. We have all seen that. A huge guy bench presses the house and while pushing four plates or more off your chest does look impressive, the boost you get from carrying more body fat for benching does nothing for athletic performance on the field. In fact, it makes you slower and you tire out faster. You'll be a better bench presser, but a worse athlete. Also, when I talk about getting strong on chin-ups, I don't mean doing an endless number of bodyweight reps. I'm talking about attaching a weight belt to your waist and loading that sucker up. The minimum I want my hockey players to be able to do is 0.5 times their own body weight. So if you weigh 180 pounds, you should have the strength to perform one perfect full range of motion chin-up with at least 90 pounds. That's the cutoff point. If you fall below that, you've got a ton of ground to make up. For more info on specific strength standards, read chapter 9 in my book, Strength Training for Ice Hockey, available at hockeystrengthbook.com. I'm going to turn this video into a three-part series so you can see how to periodize your chin-up training leading into massive personal best in just a few weeks. That's enough for the intro. Here's your first workout. 8 to 10 reps using a 4-second eccentric. Really focus on controlling that lowering part. Don't let gravity take over. Squeeze your biceps, your lats, and resist it with everything you've got. On the concentrate, aka upward part of the movement, perform a regular chin-up without slowing down, where your chin clears the bar. No kipping or any of that BS. If doing 8 to 10 reps with your body weight is too hard, then use a resistance band for assistance to get those reps. In. A strong athlete would add external load as always. Another option to make this a bit more difficult is to use a close grip where your pinkies are about 4 inches apart. You'll do this workout once per week. Over a 4 week training cycle, perform 3 sets during the first 2 weeks and then add 1 set in the last 2 weeks, so 4 sets in weeks 3 and 4. This volume increase in the middle of the training phase boosts your work capacity, helps you gain more muscle and improves your strength on your top set. I know what you're thinking, that's it? Only one exercise done once a week? Obviously, you will do other exercises in your workout as well. For that, check out this video right here where I walk you through a full upper body NHL workout. If you're doing chin-ups on an upper body day, you would perform them as the first exercise, either as a standalone movement or better yet, in an antagonist superset. If you have no clue what that means, watch my video on supersets, click the card, right here. So you would alternate chin-ups with a pressing movement. A dumbbell bench press is usually my go-to for that. In such a superset, you would do your first set of chin-ups, rest 90 seconds, continue with dumbbell bench, rest another 90 seconds, go back to chins, and so on until you have completed all work sets. But what if you're on a full body routine? How would you go about it then? As a standalone exercise, rest 3 minutes. We don't want complete recovery here. That will come in part 2 and part 3 of this series when we go into maximal strength development. You can also pair chin-ups with a lower body exercise to save valuable training time. If you choose to do that, pick a movement that doesn't challenge your grip. By using a 4 second eccentric for 8 to 10 reps, you're looking at a time under tension of 40 to 50 seconds per sec. That's a long time to hang from a bar, which causes a hefty amount of muscular burn in your forearms if you then pair chin-ups with a Romanian deadlift or split squat variation where you're holding heavy weights, the forearms don't get to recover in time for your next set of chins. So you'll perform less repetitions, 
not because your back is weak, but because the forearms give out too early. Keeping that in mind, good lower body movements that don't stress the forearms too much are glute ham raises, hip thrusts, back extensions, and Hatfield split squats. Next question is, when would you do this workout from a programming perspective? Since this is what I call base building, building a foundation of muscle and general fitness, you would do it in the beginning part of your 12 or 16 week periodized training plan. So early off season for a hockey pro, if you don't get paid to play the sport, and you're just lifting to get stronger and look better naked, then you would still kick off your program with a general muscle building phase like this one. Stay tuned for part two where I walk you through another chin-up workout for hockey players. It builds right on top of this one. The video will show up right here when it's released. In the meantime, watch this video on the top 11 exercises to develop a thick, wide, muscular back. Thank you for watching. If you want more great training and nutrition tips like this, then smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.